There's no more good films. There's nothing original anymore. Cinema is dead. There seems to be a common trend in the air nowadays, a concept, an idea that's floating around. This idea is that films nowadays just aren't as good. All that's being made is remakes, endless sequels, and reboots. That originality is dead and there's no point in watching new stuff. Why should you? When there's plenty of fantastic films from the past. Hell, some of my personal favorite films like Taxi Driver or The Godfather were made 20 to 30 years before I was even born. But what if I told you that there's still just as many good films coming out every year as there was in the past, they're just a little harder to find. Hello everyone, I'm the former film student and today I'd like to invite you on a little journey. A journey into the state of modern cinema, where we are and where we're going. So let's get into it. This concept that films just flat out aren't as good anymore is a weird idea for me personally, because it's one of the few instances where I both have experience with this in online discourse through social media and in my own personal life. But where does this idea come from? Don't worry, I won't go into a long spiel about the history of how and why we got here. The answer is fairly simple, marketing. There's also seemingly an opinion that Hollywood is completely to blame for this. They are sort of at fault, but honestly, so are a lot of moviegoers, but we'll circle back to that in a minute. The idea here is that movies are just bad now, that they're not original, just rehashes and remakes of everything from the past. Originality in cinema is a dead and long forgotten concept. And if you look to most of the film trailers you see advertised, whether it's on live TV during commercial breaks for sports games, or before whatever YouTube video you find yourself watching at 2am, the results are the same. Because either way, if that's all you're being exposed to, then I don't blame you for having that mindset at all. And while I will be making my case here why movies are still pretty damn great, there is some truth to some of this. Because a majority of what's advertised in Hollywood and the films that are often successful financially are exactly what people think they are. A good portion of the time it is in fact remakes, sequels, and reboots that are what heavily dominate the majority of ads and are the films that most people have heard about. Your MCU entries, Avatar, Transformers. The movies that make the hundreds of millions of dollars right into the billion dollar territory are what most people think of when they think modern day cinema. For Christ's sakes, we've just seen the 10th entry in the Fast and Furious franchise, 11 if you count the Hobbs and Shaw spinoff who stars everyone's favorite wrestler turned actor. Kidding, I actually think Dave Bautista's better. Regardless, there is a massive issue in Hollywood mainstream films with being too focused on the dollar signs, and less about delivering memorable and unique films. It's to the point where it's a breath of fresh air when something like Barbenheimer happens, where people are actually excited to go to the theater and see a film that wasn't a sequel to something or a remake of some 80s property. But here's where we circle back a little. I don't think Hollywood is exactly entirely at fault here. I think moviegoers need to accept a little bit of the blame. It's hard for us to collectively exclaim that originality is dead and movies are bad now when Hollywood is just listening to us. No, not our voices, our wallets, that hard earned cash. When Disney is able to release a fully computer generated remake of the 1994 animated classic The Lion King and completely remove everything that made that film special and one of the best animated films of all time and still make over a billion dollars. How can we expect Hollywood to even try and make original films? When it's that easy to put out something that just feels like a soulless excuse to show off technology and make a quick buck off a pre-established product and still make a massive profit off of it, then it's just a fool's dream to expect business-minded companies focused on making money to even remotely care about producing quality products. Even in the rare occasion where sequels in Hollywood are released that are passionately made by filmmakers with a vision that don't just feel like corporate products made by suits trying to check boxes, Blade Runner 2049 was one of the best sci-fi films in recent years, and it was a rare occasion where a big studio trusted an auteur director and gave them a large budget. Unfortunately, nobody saw the film. Even a movie like Dungeons and Dragons, despite being a little cheesy and cliche, clearly was a film that had a lot of really creative and well done action scenes. It had a unique style and fluidity to the camera movements that showcased a lot of clear purpose and passion behind it. And it flopped. It's unfortunate that it seems oftentimes it takes a rare meme scenario like Barbenheimer to propel films that are actually well done and made with passion and effort to actually being financially successful. 
Sure, there are other factors that play into this, like the cost of ticket prices significantly increasing over time, as well as COVID definitely hitting theaters hard, but this trend started long before that. So if you're someone who relies on movie trailers to inform you of what new films are being released, then I completely understand feeling like all that modern cinema has to offer is stripped down soulless versions of things that you used to love. But here's where something I mentioned earlier comes into play. As I said earlier, I firmly believe that there's plenty of great films that are released every year. They're just a little bit harder to find. The issue is that, in my honest opinion, a lot of the best films, or at least the most unique and original films that are released every year, are not the ones being pumped out by Hollywood. There's two specific places you can venture into if you really want to experience all that modern film has to offer. The first is the independent film scene. Independent films, for anyone wondering, are films that are not exactly funded or produced by major studios. They are often very low budget and made with much smaller crews. Yet every year, a lot of the most intriguing and memorable movies are ones that are from the indie scene. A24, a fairly newer distribution company, but one that's grown increasingly popular in a fast amount of time, has made it their mission over the last decade or so to purchase and distribute smaller, lesser known films so that a lot more people see them than otherwise would have. Several of the more unique and interesting films, whether it be from a story standpoint or maybe a film with a story that is familiar, but through the visuals or presentation style, feel fresh and new are films that have been distributed by A24. Popular horror films like Hereditary, X, and 2023's Talk To Me are some of the better films the genre has to offer in recent memory, all of them distributed by A24. Sci-fi films like Ex Machina, Under the Skin, and massive hit Everything Everywhere All at Once, yet, you guessed it, A24. Now some of those films I love, others I like, and others I think are just fine. But I won't deny that all of them are films that were clearly made by people who made the film with the intent to tell an engaging story with unique characters and not just make a profit off a product. So if you're someone who's finding yourself bored with a lot of the mainstream dribble that's pumped out every year, check out studios like A24 and other similar studios, or hell, even just look up what indie films are being released every year. You may not like all of the films, but you're sure to at least find a better and more diverse selection of movies to watch, and you'll definitely see some films that you've never seen before. The other place I highly recommend turning to if Hollywood just isn't doing it for you and, well, I could tell you, but how about I let Bong Joon-ho, director of 2019's Parasite, tell you instead. 장벽도 아니죠. 한 1인치 정도 되는 그 장벽을 뛰어넘으면 여러분들이 훨씬 더 많은 영화를 즐길 수 있습니다. Once you overcome the one-inch tall barrier of subtitles, you will be introduced to so many more amazing films. <laughs> Thanks, Bong Joon-ho. I couldn't have said it better myself. Foreign films are something I think everyone and anyone should get into. A lot of people I know already watch films and shows with subtitles on, so the transition isn't even all that jarring. But guys, I implore, nay beg you to give foreign films a chance. Once you get over that little barrier of having to read the subtitles while absorbing the visual image, you are truthfully opening yourself up to a world of new stories and unique films. Some of my absolute favorites, not just of the last few years, but of all time are foreign films. It's crazy that too many Americans limit their media consumption to American films. Now we have seen a little bit of a change recently with Parasite winning Best Picture in 2019 and shows like Squid Games becoming massive hits, but it still seems that too many great foreign language films go unnoticed year in and year out. Not only do a lot of these films share similar qualities to indie films, whereas it often feels like a director with an actual vision over a faceless, nameless corporate product, but the different cultures and traditions allow for a different kind of storytelling and presentation than American films. It doesn't even have to be a small-scale drama. Godzilla Minus One just embarrassed all of Hollywood by making a truly riveting blockbuster monster film that looked fantastic for less than $15 million. With not only great effects, but a genuinely compelling plot with likable and well-written characters. I know a lot of viewers may see this as me saying you have to like the movies that I like and that it's just my opinion that these movies are great, but I'm not even making the case that every foreign film or indie film are great. There's still bad films in both of those areas too. And you're right, it is completely my opinion, and if you truthfully believe that cinema is dead regardless of my arguments, then I guess I can't change your mind with one video essay. So my last ditch effort is to personally recommend 20 films that have been released since the year 2010, films that may not even be some of my personal favorites, but are ones that I can at least recommend to try and dispel the idea that there's nothing creative or original left. 
because at the very least, whether it's the story or presentation, each of these films, in my opinion, offer something unique in its experience. I'll give a little brief description of each film without spoiling anything. I hope you guys check out some of these and hopefully at least enjoy one of them. Some are a little wider known, others less so. Parasite, a South Korean 2019 film and the first foreign language movie to win Best Picture, a drama thriller directed by Bong Joon-ho that deals with themes of classism wrapped up in an engaging plot with interesting characters. Hard to predict where it'll go and beautifully shot along with great performances across the board. The Lobster, a 2015 dark comedy drama directed by Yorgos Lanthimos, is a strange but oftentimes hilariously dark comedy about a man played by Colin Farrell who enters a hotel in which a specific amount of time, if he does not meet his soulmate, he will be turned into an animal of his choosing. Great acting, unique premise, and great social commentary about relationships and how society and people view them. The Banshees of Inishirin, a 2022 dark drama comedy directed by Martin McDonough about two longtime friends and the drama and comedy that pursues when one friend decides he wants to abruptly end the friendship. An unpredictable plot with plenty of surprising moments, and the film balances a weird level of sad and dark elements along with some utterly hilarious moments. Another Colin Farrell movie, and his chemistry with Brendan Gleeson is undeniable. My favorite film of 2021, a French horror drama directed by Julia DeCorno, I have never really quite seen a film like this, a film that is simultaneously weird and sick and demented, and equal parts heartfelt and warm. It's such a weird mix of emotions that by the time the end credits roll, you don't really know what to think. I can't even explain the plot, just watch it. At the very least, you'll be thinking about whatever you just watched for days. Bo is Afraid, one of my personal favorite films of 2023, I could have recommended Hereditary or even Midsummer, which are both Ari Aster films that are a little bit more accessible, but part of the argument here is that movies aren't original anymore. Well, you go watch this and then tell me that. If insecurity and an anxiety attack were encapsulated in one film, it's this one. It's insanely weird and chaotic and strange and visceral and yeah, watch it and let me know what you think. You probably will hate it, but hey, at least it'll interest you. I Saw the Devil, another South Korean film from 2010. This one is a revenge thriller and one of the best in that market. If you're someone who thinks Taken is the pinnacle of revenge thrillers, I implore you to watch this film. It's absolutely insane from start to finish, extremely heart-wrenching and filled with fantastic bits of filmmaking, including a sequence inside a car that even after four years of film school and thousands of dollars in debt, I'm still confused at how it was done. Pig, a 2021 film billed as John Wick with a pig, another case of terrible misleading marketing, Pig is a slow burn and emotional drama that's really held down and piloted by an incredibly subdued and reserved Nicolas Cage performance. I don't want to give too much away about the plot, but this film surprised me in the best way. It's nice when even though it wasn't exactly what you were expecting, that you still find something to love about a film, and that's my experience with Pig, so yeah, check it out. Another round. A 2020 Danish comedy thriller slash drama about a group of four high school teachers who begin to start purposefully drinking alcohol throughout their everyday lives to see how it affects them. Hilarious, dark, dramatic, heartfelt with very interesting characters, and the setup alone is a great setup for great and iconic moments. It also possibly has one of my favorite endings to a film that I've seen in the last several years. Mads Mikkelsen is fantastic as always, but you probably could have guessed that. Swiss Army Man, a 2016 drama comedy, and I will fully agree that the directing duo The Daniels following film Everything Everywhere All at Once is a better film, but again, originality, and you just don't find a lot of movies that are centered around Paul Dano hanging out with a farting corpse, played by Harry Potter himself, Daniel Radcliffe. It's a very funny film that's super wacky, even sometimes to a fault, but it also has some nice commentary about isolation and closing yourself off even from people you consider friends. So if you want a really wacky weird film, check out Swiss Army Man. Drive, a 2011 drama thriller directed by Nicholas Winding Refn and starring Ken aka Ryan Gosling himself. This is back when Gosling was only doing like moody dramas, but this film is just oozing with style. It's got really strong presentation, a really great score, and has a pretty interesting plot that kicks off with one of the best opening car chase sequences I have ever seen. Under the Silver Lake, a 2018 drama, possibly one of the strangest films I have ever seen. I recently rewatched this and sort of fell in love with this film on the rewatch. For you big rabbit hole, deep dive conspiracy theorists, this movie is for you. 
Andrew Garfield spends this film searching for a girl he hung out with one night after she randomly moves out the next day, and the film just gets progressively stranger and stranger as the plot continues. Seriously, it's a wild ride, so yeah, check it out, I haven't seen much like it. Lamb, an Icelandic Swedish horror film about Naomi Rapace and her husband finding a half lamb, half human infant and raising it like their own child. What else do I really have to say? It's super weird, super wacky, the premise alone should let you know that it's a little out of the box, and I don't exactly love this movie, but I still recommend it to anyone searching for something really unique. Raw 2016, the second time Julia DeCorno makes the list, Raw is a 2016 horror film that revolves around a vegetarian starting her very first year at vet school. But similar to Tatane, the film just is really out there, it gets really weird, real fast, but in the best way. As the series of events that unfolds after is pretty wild, it's an entertaining film that doesn't pull punches and really goes for it. One of my favorite directors, and Helmer of one of my favorite films ever, Old Boy from 2003, South Korean director Chan Wook Park delivered one of the wildest and most insane erotic thrillers I have ever seen in 2016's The Handmaiden. A crazy tale that's told from multiple perspectives with plenty of twists and turns that leave you jaw dropped time and time again. A wild story that maybe doesn't reach the heights of Old Boy, but still is a fantastic experience start to finish. Side note, this film has a lot of sex so I don't recommend watching it with your parents. So if that's not your thing, maybe don't watch this one. But if you don't mind, be prepared for chaos. One of the best dramas of the 2010s, a really uncomfortable drama starring Mads Mikkelsen, The Hunt, 2012 is about a man accused of lewd acts with one of his children's students. The accusation turns his life completely upside down and he deals with the fallout. A harrowing story with a phenomenal performance from Mickelson. As mentioned, it's a really uncomfortable and sad film, but if you can move past that, it's one of the best written and acted films of the last decade. Mother. A 2017 drama thriller directed by Darren Aronofsky starring Jennifer Lawrence, this film is absolutely insane. I know I've said that before, but this time I really mean it. Not that I didn't mean it the other times, but you get what I mean. This film is so shocking at times, and the progression of events that becomes more and more insane have you questioning what you're even watching. Even though it wasn't one of my favorites of the year, it's definitely stuck with me since I first saw it. One of my top five favorite films of the 2010s, Bolt Statement, I know. The Lighthouse, directed by Robert Eggers, was my favorite film of that year and one of my favorite films of just all time. I can't tell you what it is, I just absolutely love and adore this film. It's equal parts hilarious and terrifying. I don't know a film that's successfully accomplished scenes that make me really uncomfortable and others where I'm laughing hilariously. Two career-defining performances from Willem Dafoe, who plays a Captain Ahab-esque lighthouse keeper, and Robert Pattinson, who plays a simple quiet man who becomes increasingly more and more unhinged as the film progresses. The sound design and visual style absolutely suck you into the world and time Time period, as does Eggers' attention to detail. I don't know, the movie just has a magnetism and energy to it. I also don't know many films that make me feel this way or engage me to this level. Birdman 2014 Michael Keaton plays a has-been former superhero actor taking a stab at theater. A star-studded cast and wonderful cinematography made to look like one continuous shot, which perfectly fits the story. Michael Keaton gives the best performance of his career, and the film has such a great pace and spark to it. It's obviously unique in the presentation as few films attempt the one-take look, but the story itself and how the camera weaves through the characters' lives and the relationships and dynamics is really entertaining to watch. So yeah, for the visuals alone, I suggest that you check out Birdman. The Wailing, a 2016 South Korean horror film, this film is absolutely petrifying. If you're a fan of horror and are bored by the landscape of Blumhouse Productions, I really recommend this one. It's extremely atmospheric and unlike a lot of mainstream horror films, genuinely keeps you guessing as to where the story is going. It relies much less on jump scares and more tension, tone, and memorable and disturbing imagery. It's a really strong film that has a super memorable ending that has stuck with me. The last film on the list is I'm Thinking of Ending Things, the 2020 Netflix drama thriller directed and written by my favorite screenwriter, Charlie Kaufman. If you're a fan of movies like Adaptation or Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, this is from that same writer of those films. It's a hard film to talk about without spoiling, but it's mainly about a couple as they go to meet the man's parents. It's extremely unsettling, very well shot and acted, and without spoiling things, what sounds like a generic setup turns into a fantastic exploration of existential features. 
This is one of the few films in the last couple of years I've given a strong 10 out of 10 to, and is one that at the very least will have you thinking about it long after the credits roll. So that is the last recommendation. Again, I know you all won't like all of these films. You may hate some, you may hate all of them, but I appreciate you guys watching, and if you did like a couple of them, or even one of them, let me know. This video didn't come out of malice, but more so a frustration, as there are a lot of films I think people would enjoy if they ventured outside their comfort zone. I understand that a lot of people don't want to do research when it comes to watching new films, and it would be nice if we could just, you know, trust Hollywood, but that just doesn't seem to be the case. I think cinema can still be great, and I think there's something for everyone out there. Either way, thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to click the like button. If you want to hear more from me, make sure to subscribe. As always, click the little bell notification button so you get notified when I post new content. Also, check out my horror podcast, Scared Speechless, anywhere you get your podcasts. YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, we're on all three. And as always, guys, I will see you on the next video.